Uh, Alp Mehmet is chairman of Migration Watch. Alp, good afternoon to you. Um, we've been chewing the fat good on this one. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, we, we've talked about this for many years, of course, and, you know, what is the answer to this? And I notice you guys put out a, uh, a comment on social media a couple of weeks back, um, essentially um, addressing or challenging this idea that there are no legal routes, which is often what we hear from people. I think Tim Lawton's point at the Select Committee yesterday was pretty much suggesting the same thing. As, as far as you can see, Alp, what, what is the deal here? If you are in Eritrea, is there a legal way to claim asylum in the UK other than jumping on a dinghy? Well, should there be, is the question I would ask. I, I think this is all a little bit of a distraction, really. Uh, Tim Lawton picked on a specific type of individual, a minor, 16 years old, who's being persecuted. There are very, very few people in that category, frankly. If someone in that position actually had a depend or was a dependent of someone already in this country, then they can, it's perfectly possible for them to apply for a visa to come here to join that person who um, they're dependent on. The fact is that if you're going to say um, what we're going to do is open up a route for the nearly 30 million people who are refugees around the world, and indeed the 50, 60 million people who are displaced, add to that those who are very poor and would dearly like to come to a country like ours to work, that's what you're really talking about when you say let's open up the route and make it possible for all mm. these people to apply to come here. But of course, it, if you if if you did go to the British Embassy, one of our previous communicators said, if you went to the British Embassy in Albania or Eritrea, if such a thing exists, then you would be. Uh, you're not going to get a visa, are you? They're not going to say, yeah, no problem at all. You can leg it and go wherever you like. Uh, well, as someone who actually worked in an embassy uh, doing exactly that job, if someone came to me and applied, this was many years ago, I, I confess, um, but nevertheless, it, it still applies that if someone came in and said, look, I'm desperate um, and I, in fact, am totally dependent on someone in the UK, I would like to join them, yeah. or indeed, not just a minor, but uh, a, a someone who... Uh, has the qualifications and skills and can get someone to employ them in this country, it's perfectly possible for them to apply for a regular visa to come here. With regards to the safe routes that are already there, um, part of the reason why we did that paper, which showed a third of a million people coming here over the last um, 15 years or so, was to counter the argument that we don't take anyone in. Well, we do take thousands of people in. And uh, people coming from Hong Kong, what are they doing? They're fleeing persecution yeah. from uh, the, the Chinese. Ukraine, special circumstances. They've been given permission to come here sure. and can stay here. So what, what about, things. But what about those up, uh, that are crossing on the channel? The, the, the government seem quite happy at allowing this uh, version of events that these are people that could have taken a legal route but decided not to, therefore they're not genuine. That, that seems to be the narrative. Do, do you echo no, that sentiment? They're not, no, I, I don't actually, but I don't think that's what they mean. If someone is coming from France and they're fleeing persecution or indeed have gone through any number of other yeah. countries, safe countries, wealthy countries that afford people in those circumstances asylum, then should they not have applied there first? We, we know that those who apply for asylum in countries like France or anywhere else in the e European Union, mm. at first decision, it's only about 30% that are granted asylum. In France, it's even less than that. It's 20%. With us, it's 70%. I would argue that the yardstick, the bar, is set much lower in this country because of all the pressure that is brought to bear by people like the lawyer that you uh, 
uh, uh, interviewed earlier. That's interesting. And yeah, so it's become on, so politicised. And, and governments perhaps on, perhaps are scared witless it, to be seen it, as, it, uh, as sorry, insensitive. Sorry to interrupt you. No, go sorry for it. Sorry to interrupt you, but, but there, there was... Um, he made one point about what Migration Watch is about to tell you um, with regards to those coming here illegally, being illegal immigrants. Well, uh, can I just say that we have always been very careful to say that it's the way they come here that is illegal. And no lawyer is going to say to me that someone who jumps in a rickety dinghy, having paid thousands of pounds, euros, whatever, mm. to a smuggler, is, is actually coming here legally. They're not. But he's saying and that the court ruled that... It, it doesn't matter. You could come jump that's, on a plane without not, a passport. Not what, Once you get here and claim asylum, this is his contention, is that therefore that becomes legal. That's that's not what the courts were were uh, basing their judgments on. The, the the judgment was on the fact that, uh, that it's up to the government to disprove that someone who entered at that point intended to uh, uh, enter illegally or whether their intention was that they would uh, apply for asylum at the mm. first possible opportunity, which they have done. That, that's, that's different. So does that make saying, them, if, if you've left Calais, like, let's say you've come from the aforementioned Eritrea, you've left Calais in a boat, you're saying that that point in your story is illegal, but when you arrive and say, I'm claiming asylum, then you become legal. Well, that's what, or your, that's your, what your, the courts your say. your status is legal. That's what the courts say, yeah. and, and indeed, that's what the 1951 convention says. Yes. That what, what the convention also says is that you cannot use it as a route to immigration. OK. So then, are, are, are they claim. are these people illegal immigrants then? If they've claimed, if they are legitimately allowed to, whether we like it or not, they're allowed to claim asylum when they arrive here, so they become legit. Well, what, what I would say is that there was a, a report in the BBC of all places um, where they uh, spoke to uh, an Albanian who came here um, and asked him whether he thought that he was entering illegally, and. He said, this was the migrant himself said, look, I didn't have any documents. I have no intention of doing anything other than getting a job and working in the UK. Of course I was an illegal immigrant. Yeah. Now, that's, that was the, uh, the, the, the migrant himself So it's, it's a that. quirk of law then, isn't it? That it's the, so the method is technically illegal, but the, the status you're afforded if you claim is legit. Yeah, at, at the point where you make a legitimate yeah, yeah. claim and it's it's genuine, what, what we seem to hear time and time again is that anyone who says, I'm an asylum seeker, I'm fleeing persecution, immediately is accepted as such. Yeah, and that uh, just isn't so. Li uh, listen, Alp, thank you as ever. Alp Mehmet, who's the chairman of Migration Watch.